Okay, in that case, we can continue with uh, deep image prior. I really like this paper and I want to show it to you because it's going to help us develop more intuition when it comes to convolutional neural networks and uh, the type of applications that we are using them for. For instance, uh, super resolution or denoising. What is surprising about this work is that it can actually solve the super resolution problem using zero training data, using zero validation data, and only one test data. Maybe it's not going to be a perfect solution, but it is at least doable to do so. So you're being data efficient in that sense. But how is this possible? It turns out that you can solve a minimization problem with respect to x. x is your, uh, actually x star is going to give you the super resolved image out of this minimization process. So at inference time, at test time, you're doing, you're solving an optimization problem. And what is that optimization problem exactly? What are you writing down? X star is going to give you the super resolved image. It is high resolution and the upsampling factor is R. X zero is your low resolution image. And then the thing that you're trying to optimize over is X. It has the same resolution as the super resolved image that's going to come out of this minimization process. You have some down sampling operator, which is basically drop out every other pixel, every R pixels in your image. So you have X, you drop out every R pixels, and then you're going to compare the outcome to X zero. And then you're going to solve that minimization problem. Without this R, which is your regularizer, uh, you're going to overfit. You're going to overfit to your X zero. And then uh, whatever that's going to come out of X star is not going to look like anything that is super resolved. So the regularization matters. One option, and this is what people were doing before deep learning, is you can use total variation of your image so that you try to make your pixels consistent. So that from one pixel to the other pixel, there is not a huge jump in their color values. That's one option, but uh, we usually use uh, some regularization technique like dropout, like earlier stopping to regularize a neural network. What is nice here is that you're going to use a neural network to regularize this minimization problem. So you're going to use a neural network as a regularizer. And that's basically the idea. You're going to use a convolutional neural network to regularize this problem. And what is that R when you're using the CNN? Whenever your X is the output of a convolutional neural network with some random input, then there is no penalty you're not going to penalize. Otherwise, there is a huge penalty. In simple terms, uh, what does that mean? And as I mentioned, Z is just a vector filled with uniform noise, and it's going to be fixed. You're not going to change it. What you're going to change are these parameters, theta. And f of theta is a usual CNN. You have some convolution operators. You have some uh, max pulling. And then you keep repeating yourself and some nonlinearity. Nothing fancy in terms of your CNN. What does this line translate to? You're going to take Z, which is a random vector. You're going to push it through your neural network, your CNN. That's going to give you your X. And then rather than minimizing over X, you can minimize over the parameters of this neural network. So you're searching for a solution in the space spanned by this neural network architecture to your problem. And then once that minimization problem is solved with a gradient descent, you can just take a random uh, vector, push it through your architecture for that optimal theta star, and, give, and it's going to give you x star. How does it look like? This is your ground truth. SRSNet is one of the best architectures and one of the best frameworks to come up with super resolved images. We haven't covered it yet in the course. We are going to cover it next semester because it's going to use generative adversarial neural networks. So that one, we are going to postpone covering it to later on. These are all trained. These are all uh, trained based on some training data. This is trained in a supervised fashion. Bicubic interpolation is not trained. You're 
So you're just going to do bicubic interpolation. This deep prior method is also not trained. It's not trained in the sense that you are not using any training data or you are not using any validation data. You are not treating your problem as a supervised uh, learning problem. This is not a learning problem anymore. This is just an optimization at test time. And the only thing that you need to know is your low resolution image. Despite being not trained, this is giving you impressive results. It's not as good as it's not a state of the art because there is no learning going on, but this is really impressive. And uh, somebody might say, how is this even possible? And the answer is there is some structure in a neural network, especially convolutional neural network. There is some inductive bias in them. There is some physics in them that uh, are going to rule out many of the possible images that could happen. One of them is that they need to be smooth. So within that family of the architecture that you chose, you are looking for a solution to your problem. And in that sense, you are using it as a regularizer. And this is an indication that, yes, there is something inside your neural network. The exercise is, let's try to fit or overfit natural images. Let's try to overfit natural images with noise. Let's try to overfit images that are shuffled. And let's try to overfit random images. You are going to be able to do all of them, but for some of them, the task is harder. Your neural network needs to work a lot harder. It needs to be trained more for it to be able to approximate noise. And one solution is don't wait until your neural network overfits, because if you keep optimizing here for a very long time, you are going to overfit your original low resolved image, and then your results are not going to look like this. So the solution is a combination of uh, early stopping, don't train too much, don't optimize too much in this case, and then use the benefit that there is some prior inside your neural network architecture. So I see there are a lot of questions in the chat. Uh, let me read them one at a time. Since you are saying D prior is a training, I assume that F is pre-trained on ImageNet or something like that. Not really. This is the impressive part. There is no pre-training going on. You start with random weights, and then all you're specifying is the structure of your neural network, which is a convolutional neural network. And then you're solving for theta. If you see a new image, a new test data, and you want to super resolve it, then you need to solve another optimization problem. So there is gonna be optimization at the inference time. This is gonna be a slow. This is not like uh, SRSNet, which is super fast at inference time. There is no optimization going on at the inference. So it's not like that, but it's still from a curiosity perspective of why is it even possible and why can you actually use a convolutional neural network as a regularizer? What is special about a convolutional neural network that is enabling you to do so? These are all good questions that this paper is raising. So this is really impressive. So the second question on the chat, I'm confused on what the CNN would look like in this case, considering no training. Is it just randomly initialized weights? Yes, and as I mentioned, it is just randomly initialized weights. And then there is another question. Since you are saying D prior isn't trained, I assume that F is pre-trained on ImageNet? No, so this is the same question. Maybe you fix the typo or something. Do the weights change if the test image changes? Yes, yes. So if you change your test image, there is going to be another round of optimization. I wouldn't call that training. You are solving an optimization problem at test time. And then uh, there is another one. The search space of this optimization isn't the parameter space, is in the parameter space instead of the high resolution images, right? Yes, exactly. So you are looking for the parameters of your neural network rather than looking for x, but x is a function of the parameters of your neural network. And you are saying this is an embarrassingly parallelizable problem. Yes, the neural network part is parallelizable, but this optimization step is uh, a sequential process. You take a gradient step, you add it back to the initial value for your parameters, and then you need to wait for the second one. So this is not parallelizable in the sense of the optimization process. And that's why it's slow. That was just a 
yes retype of your question when do we when we do a new test image do the weights just reinitialize randomly yes so to prove the concept you can reinitialize your weights randomly or do they change in a meaningful way no not really per each test image there is going to be an optimization process going on so i know this is different from what you're used to we never used a neural network to regularize anything in an explicit fashion but now we are using it to regularize something and this is cool did i answer all of your questions okay there is a question there is a confusion about the regularizer function what does it mean for x to be if x is a variable how can we optimize for theta if x is a space of high resolution images so this is what's going to happen you take z which is a randomly initialized vector you push it through an architecture and that's going to give you the corresponding x so you're going to use a bunch of deconvolutions if you are changing your resolution or you're going to use a unit type of architecture that's going to take you z from the space of z's to the space of x initially you were optimizing over x now you are doing a change of variable rather than optimizing over x you are optimizing over thetas the parameters of your neural network and as soon as you know your theta you are going to know your x star because z is fixed you just take it push it through your neural network does that answer your question um i guess i'm just a little confused um about like this like piecewise nature of the regularizer um because i understand that the network is giving us x but it says that when the network output equals x and so then wouldn't that be always if that output is x if uh, that makes sense i'm confused when it would not be that case and when we'd have that like really big cost yeah so here's what's going to happen the space of x which is spanned by a neural network is a smaller subspace of all of the images am i correct okay perfect so the space of images that are spanned by a neural network is much smaller than the space of images that are available or even the space of uh, high resolution x's high resolution tensors it is much smaller whenever your x is coming out of that space is in that space there is going to be zero penalty you're going to be fine there is no need to penalize anything other than that you need to penalize a lot this is for me to write this objective function while using a neural network while using the space spanned by a neural network equivalently you can just forget about this r altogether and just look for x's that have this form just look for your solution in the space spanned by a neural network does that answer your question okay perfect let's move on you can use the same framework to solve other types of problems like in painting we have never seen it up until this point in the course maybe there is some text overlaying an image and your task is to remove the text you know the locations of the text and then you can have a mask while doing your training you're changing this d you're actually setting f of theta of z minus x0 times a mask that's going to give you your objective function and then it is doing really good even better than the previous state of the art there is some glitches here but this one is removing them and then there is also denoising and we can also do denoising using this framework there is another question in the chat is it possible that when it optimizes it gives a blurrier image since it just since it is just optimizing distance from the low resolution image yes that's a possibility but apparently it's not happening in practice so i'm going through this paper not to give you answers but to raise questions because sometimes asking the right question is more important than answers okay and this paper definitely raises a lot of questions how can you use a neural network as a regularizer what is special about its architecture what is special uh, about these convolutional neural networks okay any other questions this is especially interesting because we know that a neural network can approximate noise yes and there is a comment in the chat that uh, you're amazed that cnn preserves the pixel continuity 
better than by cubic interpolation. Yes, it is indeed interesting. And this is doing it without any training, zero training data. It's not a state of the art because solving these sorts of problems, these are inverse problems, like denoising, like super resolution, like uh, in painting, there is no unique solution to these problems. These are ill-posed problems. Mm -hmm. And that's why having a learning framework, like what we have been doing so far, is more useful in practice. It's going to give you more uh, high-quality images. But it's still, this is interesting that you can use a neural network as a regularizer. There is something special about CNNs. That's the message.